Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to talk about the 1.2 million year old obsidian axe factory found in Ethiopia. The, the dates are exciting here. This pushes back the date of obsidian uh, craftsmanship by over a million years. But another thing that I want to consider is the location. Again, this is a hotbed of of a lot of stone tools. In this sense, it's no surprise that obsidian making would have also originated here as well. And of course, it's it's made by an unknown species of human that apparently mastered obsidian. And I think the best hypothesis here is most likely Homo erectus, just because they were prevalent at the time. The site itself is known as Melka Kuntur. It's in, in the upper Awash Valley of Ethiopia. You can see here on the map, that's right, pretty much in the dead center here. Um, this is a large overview. So you can see to the northeast, this is a present day Yemen, and this is uh, the Red Sea here. This strait here is the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which is important in the peopling of essentially the rest of the world. And that's uh, another topic for another video, but uh, just this entire region here has been a hotbed for humanity for pretty much the entire time humans have been around. Here's a better view from an older map. You can see here it's 1.5 to 1.8 million years old. And this is the actual site. So the site that we're looking at is Simbiro 3, which is uh, where they found this cache of uh, tools and such. And right here is the actual, uh, one of the obsidian hand axes. You can see this is exquisite work. I mean, that's, you'd be hard pressed to do that right now. I don't know anything about uh, stone axe making, but just from as a layman, you can see that it does definitely look like, it doesn't look like something in nature. It looks like something that you, you could see the napping. It's self-evident. And here, here's another photo of one on location. You can see here with a, a scale. Very, very interesting uh, stuff here. And again, they didn't think that people were doing this 1.2 million years ago. So this uh, Melka Contour site is known for the Oldowan stone tool site. So if you took like Anthropology 101, uh, the Oldowan is like one of the first chapters. And that's 1.7 million years ago. It spans uh, the, to the early Acheulean period, which is the Acheulean tools are uh, the Homo erectus tools, essentially. Um, so if you see those more likely than not some type of homo erectus was <laughs> uh, creating those um, this site is also known for many rich outcrops of obsidian that provided raw materials for ancient craftsmen so if they were going to craft obsidian it, they had the raw materials nearby to do so which makes a lot of sense so so far all this is parsimonious uh, the site yields obsidian mastery much earlier than expected like i mentioned earlier about a million years before and obsidian is delicate and dangerous, and it's a volcanic glass that requires a high level of skill to manufacture. It was previously thought that the techniques for shaping obsidian emerged during the Upper Paleolithic slash Later Stone Age. Those are two different terms that are referring to basically the same date, between 50,000 to 12,000 years ago, which is over a million years later. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the unknown species of human mastered obsidian, so they're not sure if it was Homo erectus, maybe a type of Australopith, though I think that would be a little bit too late. But it's most likely Homo erectus just because by virtue of, of the site itself. Uh, erectus lived and was prevalent during this time and does seem the most likely candidate. So as for the site itself, the Obsidian Hand Axe Workshop not just a hand axe, but a workshop, a manufacturing center, was found in the layer of sediment dating to 1.2 million years ago. And the archeologists came across uh, a cache with 578 stone tools and all but three were sculpted from obsidian. And it was the only hand axe factory ever dated to the early Pleistocene, which was between 2.58 to 775,000 years ago. In archaeology, these are known as napping workshops, and they mostly yielded flint blades and were only recorded in Europe, uh, France and the UK more specifically, um, in the middle Pleistocene. So again, this is way more, that was way more recent than this, which is almost double that almost double the middle Pleistocene, which started in 770,000 years ago. 
And uh, so what was what else was interesting about about this were the researcher takeaways and what what they uh, uh, wrote in the abstract. So um, one thing that they did was statistical analysis on this workshop, and they showed that it definitely was a focus activity with standardized hand axes. They keep using the word standardized. Um, produced from a stone tool workshop, the landscape. This is a quote: landscape was seasonally flooded following the deposition of an accumulation of obsidian cobbles by a meandering river hominins began to exploit these in new ways producing large tools with sharp cutting edges uh, the hominin were doing much more than simply reacting to the environmental changes they were taking advantage of new opportunities developing new techniques and new skills so they were uh, mass producing these uh, axes because they knew what they had and they knew its value and again, that this was an abstract from Margarita Musi, Eduardo Mendez, Quintas at all. Um, I have I have the link in the description. You guys can see it for yourself. Um, other take takeaways they had was uh, they were immediately struck that the morphological standardization is remarkable. So every axe pretty much looks the same. Uh, whoever created them diligently applied secondary retouches and was highly focused on the final regularization of the artifacts. So they, they were inspected in a way, essentially, to assure uh, high quality. Uh, achieving such homogeneity would have required highly sharpened skills and dexterity, as obsidian is a fragile rock that must be napped with considerably more finesse than flint or basalt. Uh, uh, manufacturers had to accurately evaluate the strength of the blow to avoid producing flakes of little use or to avoid destroying the core. Uh, so yeah, they, it required a high-level skill, and they had a class of people that were doing this, essentially. Uh, what that implies to you, I mean, that I guess that depends upon your own research, but to me that implies a whole host of things that weren't even considered before when talking about the subject. So what they were doing essentially was advanced craftsmanship. Uh, in order to produce a high level of a product like uh, obsidian axes, it required a higher level of skill. How does one attain that high level of skill without the distractions of everyday survival, right? I guess what you have here is, is a clashing of two narratives. Again, it goes back to the, the core issue of how much credit should we give these early alleged hunter-gatherers, right, or whoever these people were. Um, how far was their community? How far did their community extend? Were they just a tribe? Were they even a, a nation? A conf what what was going on? These now these types of questions will probably become t taken a little bit more seriously. Um, and of course, you know, th there's going to be people who who uh, are going to stay with with the the established narrative, which is which is fine. But I just I just think the the landscape of this the capabilities and the subject of discussing the capabilities of these ancient people is going to be bumped up to another level essentially they remarked that even modern nappers wear protective gloves the standardization of obsidian axes provide ample evidence of the repetitive use of fully mastered skills the emergence of such abilities marks a surprisingly massive cognitive leap for such an ancient group of humans uh, just what I mentioned before, essentially, except put in more eloquent uh, words, is this is going to be the discussion here, this massive cognitive leap. Is it even a leap? Or did did, hum did the genus Homo always have this? Do they always have these cognitive abilities? So uh, that's going to be another topic of discussion. Um, and then the last thing they remarked was, it was a prime example of convergent thinking, which is associated with creative problem solving, uh, to a lesser extent, working together. Um, they creatively solve through convergent thinking technological problems such as effectively detaching and shaping large flakes of the unusually brittle and cutting uh, volcanic glass. So I guess this leaves open like some of the questions here is why were they mass producing uh, stone axes like this? Why were they standardized? Um, what were they, were they harvesting something at a large scale? Was did they have an economy based on this? And did they did their commu community thrive because of this? Um, were, how, if they were trading these uh, products, how far did they go? Um, what were they getting in return? You know, this is all. This opens a whole can of worms. So, what 
what do you guys think? Uh, let me know some questions that this uh, brings to mind for you guys. And um, uh, one more thing, I'm going to be on the Grimerica show. Uh, we're going to record on Wednesday, February 15th. Um, I don't know if they're going to do a live thing or what, but just visit their website, grimerica.ca. They might have it uh, go live on their website. I'm not sure, but I think that's just standard practice for them. But anyway, just visit w their website and um, uh, go to, especially go to their website on February 15th. They don't have, I don't know if they have any social media anymore. They got banned from a lot of stuff. Just, uh, I guess they were talking about some other topics, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to be on their show next week and, um, tune in.